Hi everyone, it's Alfred, and welcome back to, I think, the 20th episode of Kingdom of Loathing, which means that this is now the longest running series I've ever, ever even thought about. Yeah? Episode 20, I just checked. So, um, I'm still working down this quest line, but we're going to go finish it soon. Still flooding oil slicks, I already read all of these. And it's currently very low. Unimpressed with pressure. The surging oil finally drops in pressure enough for you to get up to the single fire. There's a steady burble of crude oil under the fire, and the flammable fumes simmer above it. You bang a couple of rocks together until you get the attention of a passing interstellar starship, which lights the fire for you with its photon beam. Success. Oh, well, that wasn't overcomplicated or anything. All right. So now that one's lit up. Yep. So now we're just running around here. Um, oh yeah, we did, did I do this? There's a faint whiff of music coming from far away, just on the edge of your hearing. You start down the hall in the direction you think it might be coming from, and end up playing a lengthy game of hot and cold, walking first down one corridor, then up another. Gradually, the music becomes louder and more distinct. Smoky clarinet, double bass, double bass, wire brushes on the drums. You can hear it all clearly now, but where's it coming from? Standing at a dead end in the hallway, absentmindedly snapping your fingers in time to the jazzy tune. It's at its loudest here, but there's no band in sight and no speakers in the ceiling. There is a faint smell, as faint as the music was at first. A dark, bitter smell, like scorched engine oil. Glancing around, you notice the walls are covered with various famed framed photographs, mainly autographed celebrity headshots and tuxedo and evening gown group photos from various formal events and holiday parties. The odd man out is a large oil painting hanging on the rear wall um, above a small end table with a silver tray. The painting is very dark, but as you stare at it, you gradually begin to make out the details as your eyes adjust. It's a woodland scene featuring a smoky a forest clearing at night. Twelve spindly, leafless sycamore saplings surround a small white outlined pool of water. Or is it water? That smoky, oily smell is stronger now. The pool shimmers in the moonlight as you step fo forward to give it a closer look. It's definitely oil or something like it. You wrinkle your nose at the black, burnt odor as you kneel beside the pool and look in. You can't see a reflection in it. The full moon is visible in the faint outlines of the thin sycamore trees. But otherwise, it's like looking into a hole in the ground. Not wanting to get any closer, you step away from the pool. As one of the leafless branches brushes your shoulders, it occurs to you that something's wrong here, but you aren't sure what. The music, perhaps? It's quieter now, more distant. And as you listen, it fades away. You push through the trees, trying to follow it and catch up. But it's gone. You keep walking anyway, and eventually the forest underbrush thickens and straightens and resolves into the familiar pathways of the lodge hedgeways. You're threading the bubble wind twins. As you wander through the hedge maze, you hear two loud pops in rapid succession. You turn and see two young blonde women wearing identical green and white plaid dresses. They pop their chewing gum and look at you coquettishly. Come and chew with us, they say in unison, chomping away. Come and chew with us forever and ever and ever. All right. Your opponents are gross, grossed out. <laughs> your opponents are as grossed out by you are by the disgusting coating of mayonnaise on your skin. They take five damage from the intense revulsion. Yeah, I finally got myself mayo. Can you see that? Nope. Down in the corner. Well, at any rate. You're fighting a spider duck topiary animal? This food is apparently pretty good. You're finding a creepy ginger twin. The other side of one of the mages in the he hedges in the hedge maze, you hear two identical sounding voices having a conversation. Great, more twins, you think to yourself, but when you go around the corner, there's only one person there. She's covered in freckles, but her ginger hair has been dyed a frizzled blonde. She's wearing ill-fitting little girl's clothes, even though her body says she's at least in her 20, and her face says she's a lot older than that or has some serious city mileage on her. Oh, look, Hallie. A new friend, she says, her eyes glassy. Then she steps to the right and answers herself in a British accent. Oh, Annie, I do hope they'll be our friend. Uh, this is a little weird for me, you respond. Another hater. Go get him, Hallie, she shouts and lunges at you. All right. We got creepy ginger ale. A bear pig topiary animal. This topiary animal is a curly tail and snout like a pig, but a muzzle and ears like a bear, and the arms look almost like a man's arms, and... Look, don't drink and prune the shrubbery, all right? Cool. So, we also got Abu Peak, which is only 24% haunted, so let's go here. Follow the map to another ancient battleground. 
where the ghosts of five factions are doomed to reenact their conflict for all eternity. You see a badly with his lightsaber facing off against the furious phaser of a space tourist one on one. The lightsaber blinks, blinks red and blue. The phaser phases, but another one can keep the upper hand, upper hand for long. Hey, you shout. You guys shouldn't be fighting each other. You can coexist. I mean, the galaxy battles of Duke Scar Starkiller aren't even the same type of story as Captain Kirkard's space tours. Galaxy Battles is just the ancient hero's journey monomyth, just with spaceships instead of dragons, and space tours involves actual science. This turns on you, his jaw opening wider with the force of his screech. Then he flies away, leaving you a little freaked out. <laughs> you see a trio of Duskin Raiders battling with each other. Jared the Duskwalker likes me the best, one shouts. He told me that I was his own personal brand of heroin. No, he likes me the best, another shouts. He told me that I was his personal flavor of corn chip. That's fine, but he told me that he couldn't even kiss me because he was so passionate that he would accidentally give me two black eyes instead. Let's try to talk some sense into them. Look, ladies, I know Jared is dreamy with his shiny skin and totally not being a real vampire now, but have you stopped to think that your relationship with him is fundamentally unhealthy, you ask? He loves me, the ghosts shout in unison, their voices suddenly deep and terrifying, like a well that's full of spiders instead of water. Then they fly away, weeping. You on a row of tombstones, there's a squad of five ghosts, five Watsian ghosts, plotting their next move against a squad of space tourists. We could use the ionic pliers to agitate the groundwater underneath them and boil them all. No, another says. We have to give them a choice. What would the professor do, think? Well, the professor's a time traveler, you say. He would probably just never travel to this particular set of space-time coordinates so he didn't cut up in the fight. Or he would start the whole, stop the whole war before it starts and save everyone at once. Sounds like a real hero of the peak to me. You don't understand. There are points in time that are fixed, and some that are blibbly blobbly, and some that, look, you can't just... <coughs> the Watson ghosts rise up and fly through you into the sky, shrieking. All right, looks like the last one. I'll be honest. The, the one thing that I actually really dug from Doctor Who was the War Doctor. Oops. Was the War Doctor. Um, I think he was played by John Hurt. I just love the idea of a war anything. It's why I wrote, like, War Dance in one of my things. A little ways uphill from the battleground, a group of space tourist ghosts struggling to defend the high ground after a combined Watsian battle uh, assault. Set phasers on, uh, space tourist ranking officer says, stuttering. Take command. Set phasers on sudden realization that faster than light space travel and time travel are any kind of, are most likely scientifically impossible, you shout. Make it so. Space tourists adjust their weapons and fire at their opponents. Brief moment of silence like an injon breath, and complete chaos as the opposing forces suffer a crisis of faith. Their moaning and shrieking is absolutely terrifying, but you've thinned the ranks a little bit. And that's all we can take. It's only 10% haunted, though. That's cool. If you go in there, there'll be blood. Oh, yes, there'll be blood. It'll be blood for royal. Ready to make that trade? Dang. Well... We're only eight minutes in, but I actually finally did the meat car quest and unlocked the desert beach. So we've got border town, the border, and south of the border. So we've got the Mall of Loathing. This is an online thing. The Raffle House, I believe, is also an online thing. Gift shop. Yep, gift shop is a urinal cake it's surprisingly tasty but this isn't really something you should give to anyone you actually like perfect way of saying thanks for looting my clan or thanks for pvping the crap out of me or i'm not feeling all right today i'm just not feeling that great and a mug cake stuffed a decapede that's funny all right <laughs> welcome to our antique store which is absolutely positively a legitimate establishment, and not a front for any sort of criminal activities. Take that. Not entitled to name trophies. So then we got the border, and south of the border. As you're walking down one of the seedier alleys in Bordeaux Town, you see a sign that says Farmacia de Suenos. Suenos? Nios? Oh god, I don't know Spanish. You walk inside and see a dirty glass display case full of different kinds of medicines. A woman in a dirty lab coat walks out of the back room and sizes you up. Uh, amigo, you appear to have a serious affliction, she says. Perhaps you're in need of some medication? This one in particular, I think, would suit you well. She holds up a bottle and you read the label. Meligra. 
Increase the size of your weapon. Battle for hours without getting tired. Side effects include headache, vomiting of intestines, and death. What makes you think my weapon is small? You say offended. Now, now. Everyone needs a bigger weapon, amigo. There's no shame in it. Don't I need to scroll from the doctors and loathing to get this stuff? Perhaps elsewhere, but we do not believe in making obstacles to people getting quality health care, she says and smiles. Well, my weapon is fun the way it is. But, you know, I think my friend was talking about how he wanted his weapon bigger the other day. Maybe I'll, I'll, pick some, I'll pick some up for him. Certainly, Amigo. I hope you, I mean, your friend, will enjoy them. Let's look at those. Oh, cool. Weapon damage plus 10. These tiny blue pills are supposed to enlarge your weapon and make you be able to attack for all our hours on end without tiring. You're not sure how a pill could affect your weapon, but they seem to work. Effect engorged weapon for five adventures. You're fighting a handsome mariachi. This is a mysterious mariachi with a mysterious past. He has no name and no hometown, but damned if he hasn't got a good head of hair and a handsome face. He doesn't look too dangerous, but he's probably got a crossbow hidden in the guitar case. Five meat and a handsomeness potion. Oh, dear. Finger licking death. I'm uh, I'm hilariously overleveled for this place, aren't I? Yeah, I, pretty sure I am. Well, walking around the back alley, you see a circle of men surrounding two roosters engaged in mortal combat. You know, it's just I just realized this. It's so weird for me to see combat written with a C. I've I can't think of the last time I saw Mortal Combat where combat was spelled with a C. That kind of blows my mind. One of them is a sleek, well fed big red rooster. He appears to be holding a bowl of cereal. Odd. The other one is a big white rooster with a red comb. He has a curious crow. To your gringo ears, it sounds like, I say, I say, boy. I say, I say, I say. Excuse my foghorn leghorn impersonation. A dirty old man with an eye patch sees you looking around the perimeter and confronts you. Hey, senor, you want to bet on the fight? The red one's name is Tapayunta del Maiz. He's favorite to win. The white one's is Cuerno de la Piena del Cuerno de la Niebla. He's the underdog. Would you, clear to, would you care to place a wager? Eh, sure. You place your bet, and watch in horror as the favorite gets pecked to a pole. Your moral outrage combines that you're outraged at the loss of meat. You walk away because you can't afford to run. Oh, I remember this one. See, one of the back alleys of Bordeaux Town, wondering if anyone wears the god-awful t-shirts they sell to tourists, you're accosted by a kid selling chewing gum. Where is Chicle, he asks. Thankfully, you remembered how to pick up a border speak phrase book when you crossed the border, and you know how to respond to him. No, gracias. Mi dentes no son suficientes duras para más col- Oh, God, I'm butchering myself. Wait, do you speak border speak? The kid asks, wait, do you speak English? You say almost at the same time. In that case, do you want to buy some chicles? I mean, quieres chewing gum? I mean, do you quiero comprar chewing gum? Oh, forget it. The kid throws some gum at you and walks off in disguise. Looking for a less savvy tourist to bother. We got pickle-flavored chewing gum. Ugh. Oh, it's this guy again. You walk away, but the kid follows you everywhere you go. Shouldn't you be leading around some blind CIA agent? You ask him. Yeah, but I got bored. I mean, quieres chicle? Aha, you do speak English. Nope, just yeah, I got bored in this speech explaining that. Really? Quieres chicles? Finally, you buy some of the kid's gum just to get him to leave you alone. You get lime and chile flavored gum and will lose 30 meat. 30 meat? You're not even sure this stuff is chewing gum. It's got a hard sugar coating over a wee tiny bit of some mildly squishy substance. You're not convinced that being chewy and gummy automatically makes for makes something chewing gum. I mean, pencil erasers fall into that category, except for the sugar part. And this is the same description. Mystic pickleness and spicy limeness. It's kind of funny. All right. Well, now that we're all beefed back up to maximum. Oh, yeah, we got to bonk these guys slowly, slowly over and over. Tries to claw you in the knee, but has already chewed her fingernails to nubbins. <laughs> we got the Abu Flu. Nice. Fighting a badly night ghost. A ghost leaps down from a nearby tree, lands one foot on a tombstone, then does a double backflip to dismount and land in front of you. He's dressed in all black with an intricate 
black and red tattoo over his face and a ring of little horns on the top of his head. He pulls out a black cylinder, presses a button, and two glowing red blades pop out of either side. Man, you're clearly a total badass. How'd you end up as a ghost? Seems like mowing through the other faction would be easy for you. Oh, that. Well, I jumped around a lot and I got one kill, but then I strutted gl around gloating until someone cut me in half. Well, that's disappointing. Hey, screw you, the ghost shouts, attacking. He holds out his hand and makes a tickling gesture. <laughs> oh, my voice is too deep for me to do that properly. I just want to finish it. I want to be done. This whole area is so grindy. Hey, all right. Come on, ghosty. Light my pyre. You finally clear, see a clear path as a signal fire and make your way to it. You have to dodge the few remaining lightsaber blasts and one phaser you'd swear was set to smelling cheese even though there's no cheese around. But you're finally standing at the base of the pyre. You see a claybender ghost swarping towards you and yell, Hey, your mom's so fat, she's a hippo animagus. The claybender shouts, Berninatus, and shoots a fireball this way, which you dodge so it lights the pyre. Nice work. All right. Now we just got to go to the Twin Peak. More mismatched twins. I already read this one. I got to try to remember what I have and haven't read. This is, this is what happens when I record these uh, out of order. Let's search the pantry. I already did this one, didn't I? Uh, have I done this one? Room 237 is notable for the fact that the key sitting in the lock, perhaps carelessly forgotten by the housekeeping staff. Okay, that and the overpowering feeling of a lurking evil presence. But the key was the first thing you noticed. You unlock the door and step inside. The room seems normal, at least within the standard set by the 70s orange and brown school of interior design. The bed is neatly made, and you spend a happy moment appreciating the fact that the agency didn't bother to outfit you with one of those ultraviolet gadgets that show you every stain ever perpetrated on a room ever. <laughs> Then you turn to face the bathroom door. The bathroom, you think grimly, is always the worst. You open the door, and the presence of evil hits you like a slow-moving tidal wave. The fluorescent lights cast a flickering, sickening pallor over the avocado green fixtures. Ew. There's no curtain obscuring the bathtub. You think you see something lying in it. As you step towards the bathtub, the evil presence you've been feeling resolves into an all-too-physical odor. Rotten meat. Gardanius. The rotting fruit stench of an infected, pus-leaking wound. Ugh. You aren't surprised to find a dead body in the bathtub. You are surprised to find that she's lovely. Could have been the homecoming queen. She lies in there, motionless, naked, wrapped in plastic. The shower curtain, apparently. You push the sheeting aside, and a cursory glance shows no obvious wounds, not even decomposition. She could be mistaken for her being asleep. So where's that smell coming from? You examine her face. There's something about her that you find strangely familiar. A stream of woman's names floats across your mind. Teresa? Laura? Carolyn? Can't remember who any of them are, but you're sure none of them are her. You carefully grasp her chin with your hand and turn her head from side to side, checking for cuts or abrasions. Her neck makes a creaking sound as rigor mortis, rigor mortis resists the force. You don't see anything unusual, but then your vision is starting to get slightly hazy. It's hard to think. Your head feels like it's packed with cotton balls. That smell. How can something sp smell so sweet and be so horrible? Your thoughts dissolve into a muddled blur, leaning in closer to her face, so calm and innocent. Her arms reach up to hold you. Ugh. Sweet, cold breath. Her lips press gently against yours, then more firmly. You brush the hair at your, her temple with your fingers. A clump of stringy gray hair pulls off in your hand. Ugh. You try to pull away, but she resists. Ragged n nails claw at your back. You jerk away, fall, fall back onto the floor. She laughs, a mad wheezing cackle. Her body is ancient, sagging, green, withered flesh, weeping sores. You scramble back her, crab-like. Unable to look away, she climbs out of the bathtub. This is kind of a, a abrupt shift to terror. I'm not not feeling it. This is kind of dope. But, uh, ooh, real wake up. You bump into the sink, grab it, and clamber to your feet. She chases you out of the bathroom, laughing and howling. She's on your heels as you race into the bedroom. Her claw-like fingers narrowly brush your collar as you dive out of the room, slam the door, and turn the key. And then you keep running down the hall. The carpet's black and white zigzags, zigzags blur to gray. The red curtains covering the walls shift in the breeze as you sprint past. You tear open the hotel's front door and dive outside, screaming into a snowbank. Much later, as you wake up, much later you wake up back in the hedge maze. You're gonna need some new trousers. All right, well, cool. Hey, we got a we got a muscle point. Getting 
I'm bearing, I'm barreling down on uh, level eleven. Though I still have all these things to do. Damn. Giant motorcycle boots. All right, let's follow the faint sound of music. What happens if we turn the volume? Okay, faint sound of music. Dang, it's the same. Well, hmm. Why am I getting a phone call? I'm just going to let that ride. I really do wish that people wouldn't call me. Let me see. Oh, wait, I actually haven't turned in the meat car quest. So I can do that. But yeah, I think the uh, Twin Peak quest, you just need to, like, essentially waste 50 adventurers, with adventurers, which is just kind of... I see you've rebuilt the meat car. Thank you, Alfred. After such trials, you deserve a respite. Perhaps a trip to the beach. I'll mark it on your map. Oh, I already went there. Keep your eyes peeled if you head south of the border. It can be a dangerous place. If you're in the mood for something safer, head to the travel agency instead. All right. Oh, boy. I must request a favor. I spent the morning fighting a mess of unholy proportion that besieged our bathroom, and I missed lunch. I suffered from a great hunger. I have placed a ticket order from the White Citadel me near Whitey's Grove. If you would sally forth and acquire it for me, I will compensate you. Okay. Thank you, my friend. I appreciate it greatly. I can't provide detailed directions to your goal, but if you be in your journey at Whitey's Grove, it shouldn't be difficult to locate the path. It's just in the woods. You're fighting a knight in white satin. This is a knight in white satin. He never reaches the end. The end of kicking your ass, that is. Or getting his ass kicked by you. Whichever. While well, wandering around Whitey's Grove, you encounter a faded sign. You pick up the words White Citadel and a faded arrow pointing eastward. Your astute deductive skills allow you to conc conclude the White Citadel must be east of here. Oh, all right. It's the whole thing. Um, I've been going for 22 minutes, and if you may recall, actually, I don't know if you will. Let me just check the uploads. Yes, okay, so uh, this is the new era where I try to sh uh, have things a little shorter, which I will do now. Um, thanks for coming by. I've been Alfred. And this has been Kingdom of Loathing. Go play this game for yourself. It's a lot of fun. And uh, remember to take care of yourself. Thank you.